the ethical issue that everybody focused on forever was that, can you take someone, tissues from someone without their permission and use them in research? And should they have done that in the 50s? Life is made out of cells. cells make Who owns your body? The case of Henrietta Lacks, assessing rights on the new genetic frontier. Different cells have different jobs, but the question of who owns your body may seem like a simple one, but the right of a person to own the cells in their body after they're removed has been a controversial issue. Courts have been asked to establish ownership of people's cells, yet many questions remain on who owns your body. While the battle over who owns your body may seem like a recent one, one of the most famous battles over this issue had its origins in 1951. The person involved, a poor southern black tobacco farmer named Henrietta Lacks, but scientists know her as Gila. When Henrietta thought she might have cancer, she went to Johns Hopkins Hospital for a diagnosis. During the procedure, Dr. Howard Jones took a sample of her tumor and gave it to a team trying to grow immortal cells in culture. The doctors were expecting the cells to grow and eventually die out, but Henrietta's cancer cells kept on living. The doctors performed various tests on the cells to see what could kill them, but nothing did. The cells exhibited the same growth in the test tube as they exhibited in her namely that they were unstoppable and continued to grow in a very special way. So it was the first human cell line. Her tumor, incidentally, did not respond well to treatment. Henrietta Lacks died on October 4th, 1951. George Guy, the scientist that grew Henrietta's cancer cells, or HeLa cells, distributed them to scientists across the world. He hoped that they would experiment and find cures for diseases using the cells. The cure for polio, among other things, was discovered using HeLa cells. Some of the scientists distributed HeLa cells commercially, set up companies, and became rich. Henrietta's cells, taken without her knowledge or consent, became a key tool in medical research. We will show you some actual pictures of colonies in a test tube of cancer cells such as those I just showed you. It is quite possible that from us fundamental studies such as these, that we will be able to learn a way by which cancer can be completely wiped out. Dr. Guy kept what he had done a secret from the Lax family because he was afraid of a lawsuit. He gave the cells a code name, HeLa. Henry Lax was forgotten by science, but her cells were about to become world famous. Years later, Henrietta's family heard of the profits the scientists were making. They thought they deserved a share of the profits and attempted to sue Johns Hopkins for an authorized use of their mother's cells. The court's decision might be the answer to the question of who owns your body. The amazing story of Henrietta Lax became widespread through the research of journalist Rebecca Sklute. She spent several years with the Lax family on their quest to find out about their mother. My basic biology teacher, when I was 16, said there are these cells that have been alive since 1951 and the woman they came from died and she was black. Like that was all he said. And I went, what? Who, what are these cells and why, why, who was she? And did she have kids and what are they thinking? And a lot of what brings them through the story is the characters. The things that happen to them and the things that they do are, are really sort of too incredible. It's a story about family, and it's a story about what happens when you lose a mother, children trying to learn about their family, while at the same time, you're learning that you actually benefited from their mother's death. Every single person out there, there's not a single person in the world, really, who hasn't benefited in some way from these cells. There are two main schools of thought on the question of who owns your body. One opinion is that one has the right to their cells after they are removed, and doctors should not be allowed to take these cells without their consent. These people believe the cells of a person are the property of that person and view taking of that property similarly to taking a limb or a prized possession. The other opinion is that the ownership that an individual has over their cells 
may inhibit further scientific discoveries. These people believe that without cell lines from humans, scientific discoveries would never happen and science itself would not move forward. If we have, if we have to get patient samples, the amount of paperwork that you have to do you know, to really reassure everybody exactly what is this going to be used for. Um, you know, how is the patient going to be kept anonymous, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's almost, in a way, overkill in the opposite direction now, um, just to be so careful um, about these issues. But, you know, this material is extremely valuable and important because, you know, you, you can work in cell culture, but there's a lot of things missing that you can only get if you get the actual section of the tissue or so. It's pretty valuable. Many times, courts are called upon to resolve questions of ownership. Although the Lax family has never profited from the use of Henrietta's cells, they recently gained some control over the decisions of who uses them, what they are used for, and what information is released. John Moore sued his doctor for commercially distributing parts of his spleen without his consent. The court ruled that Moore had no right to any share of the profits made from commercialization of anything developed from his cell line. When Ted Slavin found out that his blood cells were immortal, he commercially distributed them throughout the world and made millions of dollars. Over the years, courts have ruled both for and against individual ownership of one's cells. There really is no definitive answer to the question of who owns your body today. The use of Henrietta cells had a tremendous impact on society. Without those tissues, we would have no tests for diseases like hepatitis and HIV. No vaccines for rabies, smallpox, measles. None of the promising new drugs for leukemia, breast cancer, colon cancer and developers of the products that rely on human biological materials would be out billions of dollars. Before the Henrietta Lacks case and other cases took place, people accepted authority and did not question authority as much as today. Authority like doctors who may take tissues without consent. Court cases over the years have been trying to establish whether human genetic material can be owned by others. Future court challenges may consider questions of privacy and patients' rights. An important area where the Henrietta Lacks case is relevant today is in the battle over patient privacy. The only way to own our bodies is to have control over personal information. It's many of the electronic health record systems today actually sell your data and believe they own it. We should remember that the technology in healthcare should be used to support individuals because 75% of the public at least will contribute to research. 98% of the public hates research that takes their data without notice, without consent, without an explanation. Is our personal information the HeLa cell of the future? And if so, are we all Henrietta Lacks? Rebecca Sklute says, how you should feel about all this isn't obvious. It's not as if scientists are stealing your arm or some vital organ. They're using tissue scraps you parted with voluntarily. Still, that often involves someone taking part of you. And people often have a strong sense of ownership when it comes to their bodies, even tiny scraps of them. Especially when they hear that someone else might be making money off those scraps or using them to uncover potentially damaging information about their genes and medical histories. But a feeling of ownership doesn't hold up in court. And at this point, no case law has fully clarified whether you own or have the right to control your tissues. When they're part of your body, they're clearly yours. Once they're removed, your rights get murky. Here's one final question for you. Who owns your body 